This is Margaret River, and this is last year's champion, Gabriel Medina, surfing Margaret River. I'm going to analyze fantasy picks and answer the question, who will survive the cut? I had a computer expert create a statistical matrix that will help us determine who goes to Tahiti and who goes to the Challenger Series. Let's first take a look at the wave at Margaret River. Competitively, you'll rarely see anyone go left unless it's huge or it's the 80s. There's just not as much scoring potential. Here's John John Florence showing us how to get a 9.37 at Margie's on a great wave. He takes a fairly mellow drop into a big wall and gets his points on an outside maneuver. Dang. Usually the wave will back off a bit for a cutback or two in the middle section, setting up the final hit on the inside where the gnarly rock reef lives. How gnarly? Here's Molly on a smaller one, but the same idea. Huge deep carve on the outside, and then into a foamy two-wave hit on the shallow gnarly inside. And again, those rocks. There's variations in the wave with tide and swell. For example, on longer period swells, the wave can barrel, as John shows us here with a 10-point ride. And sometimes there's a big closeout section to hit. Let Matthew McGillivray demonstrate. Nice. When choosing your fantasy team, I would consider who can perform big outside maneuvers, flow through the downtime in the middle of the wave, and then handle the inside section. Completing the last part of the wave is often critical for a good score, so keep that in mind. Remember, speed, power, flow, combined with who the judges are favoring. We'll have that discussion on my live show this Sunday, 5 p.m. PST. More on that later. Margaret River is the most consistent wave on tour and maybe the world. It picks up a lot of raw swell from the roaring 40s where intense lows bring large open ocean waves that are often compared to Hawaii. Sometimes I think of Haleiwa when I see Margaret River's right. Conditions are ideal when high pressure systems settle in and bring easterly offshore winds. The current forecast shows a couple of good pre-event warm-up days leading into the first day of the waiting period on April 11th, where I expect the event to be on. Tides look favorable as well. Then the ocean has some downtime before a large swell with unfavorable conditions takes over. It's not until the end of the waiting period that we see cleaner and better surf. Long-range forecasts can change, so stay tuned to oldsurfdad.com and follow me on Instagram for daily surf updates. While the open ocean reef break, the box, was last surfed in the men's round of 32 in 2019, it hasn't been considered since then. The box is more fickle than main break and needs a more westerly swell direction and a mid to high tide. But when it's working, it sure is fun to watch. The problem is that Margaret's is usually pretty good at the same time, and it probably costs the WSL more time and money than it wants to spend. Perhaps perfect conditions could force their hand and they consider it, but I would not build my fantasy team around that wave. Before we get into the cut, I want to announce that I'll be closing our fantasy league once the Margaret River event starts. That keeps it fair from poachers who try to come in the last minute and win the John John mini surfboard on a trophy base. Here's our top five overall rankings showing Sarah leading the way and vying for the trophy. Is your fantasy team in the middle of the pack or even a bottom dweller? Don't worry, you can win prizes at each event from Carve.Surf, like Surfing Graham did at Bell's. He took home a $100 Carve.Surf gift certificate. Congratulations to you. Here's the men's rankings, and those in the green box on the left have already made the cut. Those in the yellow and red boxes still need points, and you can see the mid-season cut line between Ian Gentile at the bottom of the yellow box and Cade Madsen at the top of the red box. If the season ended right now, everyone in the red box would be out. You can see the event rankings points up for grabs, and thanks to our computer stat expert, DYL, you can determine what each surfer needs to potentially make the cut. Let me interpret the spreadsheet. Green, all the way across, means that that surfer made the cut. The red means that if the surfer earns that result or less, they are out. For example, if Kylie Belly doesn't win in the semis, He could be cut and going back to the Challenger Series with the kids unless he has some luck on his side and some of those above and below him lose. Callum Robson needs a win to guarantee his ticket to Tahiti or have a lot of things go right. Gnarly. To restate, 
this spreadsheet is conservative and some surfers may make the cut with a slightly lesser result depending on how others perform. The spreadsheet will be updated and results will be more clear as the event goes on. Any questions, let me know in the comments. Here's the women's version, which is much more intense because there are less surfers and less will qualify. There's also a link to the spreadsheet for the women at oldsurfdad.com on the fantasy page. I think the pressure of the cut will motivate some and discourage others. What do you think? I want to hear your thoughts on the live show this Sunday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's 8 a.m. in West Oz, where T-Bone from the Barrel Podcast will join us. We'll make our picks together and have plenty of topics on the table, especially after Bells. Jumping into women's tier A, I see the finalists from the recent Bells event in the first two spots. Joanne was 20 seconds away from the win, but Katie's cold-blooded focus and savant-like surfing led her to a real live buzzer beater victory. I'm stoked to see Joanne in tier A, and she won at Margaret River in 2018, but I think the next generation is just surfing at a higher level of performance in heavier waves. I'm leaning towards Molly with that mean inside section in mind. It doesn't hurt that her stats here are the best of the three, and she's number five in my power rankings. As you know, all three of these women have already qualified for the mid-year cut. Women's Tier B has more former Margaret River champions, three of them. Can you name them? There's Tatiana Weston-Webb, who won most recently in 2021, Lakey Peterson with a win in 2019, and Tyler Wright, who won all the way back in 2016. When I look at Tier B, I don't see anyone that is afraid of powerful waves. They're listed here as they are in the rankings, and the first three, Caroline, Betty Lou, and Brisa, have all qualified for the remainder of the tour. All three are excellent picks, but I think Caroline stands out because of her backside consistency and she was in the semis at Margie's last year. Both her and Brisa are trending with semis at Bell's last week. Tati is very close to qualification, and as long as she can avoid the Elim round, she'll make the cut. I like Tati's backhand hit on the inside sections, which were key to her win in 2021. The rest of these women have some work to do, and we'll probably see head-to-head -head battles where qualification goes to the winner of the heat. Tyler has had success in West Oz and has the highest average heat score at 14.28 over nine events. That's pretty damn good. She also is number one in my statistical power rankings. However, I'm not stoked about how she casually walked up the beach with time on the clock in her Bell's heat against wildcard Ellie Harrison, thinking she got the score when she could have paddled out for another wave. Am I bitter because she was my power surfer? Yeah, maybe, but it was a lame move lack sportsmanship, and made me wonder if her heart's in it. You all should pick her. I'll probably pass. Gabriella Bryan has had an off year, but Margie's is a wave built for her power surfing. She'll need to get into the semis to be absolutely safe. I hope she's on the rest of the tour because in my mind, she's a great competitive surfer and I enjoy her approach to wave riding. Luana, Lakey, and Sawyer round out tier B and the way this year's been, it's hard to count anyone out. Of the three of them, Sawyer Lindblad surfing has impressed me the most, and she has some momentum after quarters at Bells. But again, Lakey is a 2019 Margaret River champion and is fighting for her career. Right now, in Tier B, I would pick Brisa and Caroline, but that could change when I make my picks live with T-Bone. And again, when I reselect. You'll see the reselects posted on my Instagram, at Old Surf Dad, or I'll make another video if there are a few lay days. Tier C also has former Margaret River champions Sally Fitz in 2017 and Isabella Nichols in 2022. One of them will be my pick unless Bronte McCauley gets a wild card, and that's a hard pick to pass up. She's been in the semis the last three years at her home event, which is remarkable. For those points, I'd pick her in Tier B and probably Tier A too. The first thing I see in men's Tier A is is Jake Marshall coming in at number four in the world. I said in an earlier video, he's better than you think, and now he's even better than I thought he'd be. Huge respect. The fantasy winner of the Bells event, Surfing Graham, actually picked Jake Marshall as his power surfer. Now, I don't have the courage to do that, but nothing makes sense anymore, so why not? However, it's easy to pick the usual suspects here. John John has had the most success with two wins and a heat win percentage of 82.86.
he's winning his Margaret River heats more than 80% of the time. That's impossibly high at this level. Over the last two years, he's been in the semis and the finals. Plus, that down carve on the right-hand wall, are you kidding? I'd pay $15 to watch it from the car park. <laughs> Link in the description. Local Jack Robinson had a knee injury last year, but won the event the year before in 2022, beating John John. He'll be keen to represent his hometown. Barron and especially Ethan have had good results in West Oz, while Kanoa has struggled, but the interesting pick here is Cole Hauschman. It all seemed to click for Matt Bells. Sure, there was some controversy, which we'll get into on the live show, but the guy has serious power pokes that the judges seem to like. Is he flavor of the month or here to stay? We'll see at Margie's. I saved Griffin for last because he nearly won two in a row and looks polished, versatile, and champion-like. I'm leaning towards John and Griff, but the way things are going, I might be better off taking Jake and Cole. Anyway, everyone in Tier A has made the cut, and in Tier B, both Crosby and Jordy are in. I love Crosby here almost as much as Jordy if he can rekindle that magic he had in Hawaii. Rio, Liam, Leonardo, Matthew, and Connor all need to make the round of 32 to guarantee their entry to the back half of the tour, and I think all of them probably will. There are some good picks here. My only concern would be Rio and Larger Surf, but he's been surprising me all year. Of those five, Matthew McGilvray is my favorite, making the semis in 2021 and 2022. Matthew thrives at Margaret's, especially when it's got size. If the forecast looks frightening, he's your guy. The next five on the rankings, Yago, Ryan, Idolo, Imai, and Gabriel, need to make the round of 16 to ensure they don't go to the CS. Again, this is a conservative estimate and depends on who loses around them. But the lower you are in the tier or in the rankings, the more points you need to make the cut. Which brings up Gabriel Medina. I can't imagine a world without him on tour. I thought he would easily make the final five and possibly win the salad bowl. And he still could. But dang, he is in a precarious position. I picked both Gabby and Idolo the last two events with mixed results. Will I do it again? We'll see on the live show. Yagadura is a strange one for me. I thought this was his year and he would lead the charge of the Brazilian storm. But here he is in the middle of the pack, needing a result to qualify. To round out the long list of Tier B is Ramsey, Ian, and Cade, all of which need a quarterfinals to be completely safe from a charge low in the rankings. Cade is currently below the cut line, while Ian and Ramsey are barely above. I'm a fan of Ian Gentile and Ramsey surfing, but I probably won't pick any of these three. All the surfers in Tier C are below the cut line, and I'm still disappointed in myself for falling into the code trap at Bells after Kelly showed us one good heat. But you're not going to fool me anymore, Jimmy Slade. <laughs> By the way, Kelly needs to win the event to make the cut. I hope he officially retires at Margaret River, and those of you at the event can carry the goat at the beach after his final heat. Meanwhile, the Pupa brothers are just below the cut line, and I could see them making some heats and upsetting some higher seeds. They just need solid results and some things to go their way. Now, some of you are probably wondering why I didn't choose West Oz tube psycho Jacob Wilcox, and that's because in the last three years, he hasn't made it past the round of 32, and in 2022, went out in the elimination round. He's a great surfer, but he's more of a tube psycho than a Margaret's wall banger. Not to worry, though, he'll requalify in the CS and be back next year. Which brings me to Kayo, a fixture on the world tour and a regular in my fantasy teams in years past, often with good results. Thank you, my friend, but I have to move on and bid you farewell unless a miracle happens, and he needs a miracle, like runner-up and a lot of luck. Same for Frederico. I know there's a lot of you that watch my channel from Portugal, and that's what makes it difficult to tell you the hard truth. Kika is 32 years old, and with a current talent in 2024, he is somewhere in the no-man's land between the CS and the CT. Sorry to tell you, but I think his time is up. I was one of the many that chose Ethan Ewing for my survival pick, and that was a sweaty few minutes between the buzzer beater Ethan got and the overscored result. I'll take it though, what the hell, scoreboard, I want seven grand and a panda quiver. So what about my Margaret River survival pick? I'll select Matthew McGillifray and remind you that survival rates for each surfer are at oldsurfdad.com. Check the link in the description. Next up is Tahiti, 
and a special announcement. That's all coming in a few weeks. Meanwhile, don't forget to check out the live show this Sunday, April 7th at 5 p.m. Los Angeles time. Thanks for watching. And now your moment of stoke. But it is definitely a big wave dive location. Margaret River is closest to Hawaii for power. It's really deep water. It's powerful. It's thick. It's cold. It's sharky. The locals that surf it yeah. ride big boards, big long boards. You need to be pretty confident. It's intimidating. Let's just say that.